الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم تر كيف فعل ربك بعاد إرم ذات العماد التي لم يخلق مثلها في البلاد وثمود الذين جابوا الصخر بالواد وفرعون ذي الأوتاد الذين طغوا في البلاد فأكثروا فيها الفساد فصب عليهم ربك سوط عذاب إن ربك لبالمرصاد صدق الله العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى في القرآن الكريم repeatedly have mentioned the stories of Anbiya alayhim as-salatu was salam in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a very beautiful way have explained the message of Anbiya alayhim as-salatu was salam what was their message the method of delivering the message, the main points that all Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam invited people to and emphasized on, and then the result of accepting or rejecting the message of Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam. And we mostly read about those nations who rejected the messages of Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam and how they were punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of turning away from the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from the message that was given to them by Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam. I'm sure every Muslim is well aware that Qur'an carries these type of information. As far as details of it, Wallahu alam how many of us we care of going to it, reading it, understanding it, and then trying to get our lessons from it. But when we look at these ayahs of Qur'an al-Kareem, we can very easily tell and it's very clear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not mentioning these as stories of the past only. He's mentioning it mainly as lessons for future. It's not a book of history that tells us that this is what had happened. So then we can get together and curse at those people. Or we mock at those people. The main purpose of mentioning these things in Quran is to tell us about Sunnatullah. See, we normally use the word Sunnah with the ways of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran al Kareem have used the word Sunnatullah. What does it mean? The way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always deals with people. The rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have set for human beings. One of the ayahs says, 
سُنَّةَ اللَّهِ فِي الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِ وَلَنْ تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَبْدِيلًا وَلَنْ تَجِدَ لِسُنَّةِ اللَّهِ تَحْوِيلًا This is how Allah dealt with the nations that came before you. And you would not find any changes in the way that Allah deals with people and you cannot have any person who can change the ways and the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have no power to change the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can have any power in this world, show each other how strong we are. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when it comes to my rules, there is no way. You cannot have a legislation or you cannot have a committee that will sit down and say, okay, now we are changing these rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the rule of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always been there. As long as Anbiya alayhi salatu was salam are followed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps the doors of his rahmah open for the human beings. And large number of people get protected because of few people that are practicing the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As we know, the rahmah is greater than the anger. The mercy is greater than the adab. But when nations determine on just disobeying, disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and no reminder works, <coughs> nothing helps them. <coughs> and human beings, they act as they are the sole owners of this world. They are the ones who can set their own rules of this world, how every system in this world should be running. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows His qudrah and His power. There are so many ayahs in Quran al-Kareem that Allah subhanahu, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about how these things happened in the past. What were the results of it? And sets, uh, gives us the rules for the future that how these things will be dealt with in future. Take a very short ayah or a short portion of an ayah. Sayyidina Shu'ayb alayhi salatu wassalam. When he's advising people, he said a beautiful sentence there that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala approved it so much, loved it so much that he narrated that sentence of Shu'ayb alayhi salatu wassalam in Quran al kareem Of course, Shu'ayb alayhi salatu wassalam must have said a lot of things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned few out of those. Shu'ib alayhi salatu wa salam says to his people, وَلَا تُفْسِدُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ بَعْدَ إِصْلَاحِهَا وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا Once you see that there is peace in the world, في الأرض, on this earth, there is peace, people are living peacefully, never try to bring any facade after that. Don't ever bring any mischief into the land. And always be afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَدْعُوهُ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا And pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with hope and fear. Looking at the situation of the world. Do we really see this thing that Shu'ayb alayhi salatu was salam was asking his people to do? La tufsidu fil ardi ba'da islahiha. And today, not just talking about iman and faith, human beings in general, talk to any person, regardless of that person's background or that person's religion, no peace of mind. If a person is to think about, I want to live somewhere where I can have better peace of mind, you cannot think of a place. The only choice may be leave this world. Otherwise, it seems like this world is a place of fitna and fasad. 
This is all what this world is about. Just fitna everywhere and mischief, corruption all around. And all type of corruption. In the previous nations, you see that Sayyidina, the nation of Sayyidina Shu'ab alayhi salatu wasalam, they were indulged in some type of sins. The people of Sayyidina Salih alayhi salatu wasalam, they were involved in a different type of sins. The people of Sayyidina Hud alayhi salatu wasalam, involved in another type of sin. The people of Lut alayhi salatu wasalam, they are involved in some other type of sin. We see the combination of all of those things, that all of those type of sins that were committed by all of those nations at different times, we see them all at once now in the world. Pick up the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and see what did these different nations do for which they were destroyed and they were punished. And we will see that each and everything that is mentioned about different nations in the world, we all, we are doing all of that at once. And it may be very amazing and surprising that not only that these things are happening, we may see that there is only 10% of the people who are doing certain things. 10 people, 10% 10 of the people of the world that are doing it. But in reality, according to the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is not 10% of the people who are doing it, it may be 90% of the people who are doing it, because as per the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the person who approves an evil, he is considered to be part of that evil. I was thinking about the situation very sincerely and very deeply to see what is happening in the world. And really we see one thing for sure. One thing that we will see if we just look around and what's happening in the world. When we look at the corruption, when we look at the mischief, when we look at all of this facade that have been that have been taking the peace of mind away from the human beings, remember, I'm not just specifying the ummah. Generally, from human beings, you will see one thing for sure: that normally we find those who are against the mischief. They are not really against that mischief itself. All they want is, it should be under my control. Let it happen as long as it will happen under my supervision. Let me have the power over doing these things. I will do them better than others would do. But I don't want others to do it. As far as just taking away these the root problems, dealing with the root problems and disliking the facade in the world and to see people living in peace, to see that human beings, they all can live in this world and this is the place that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have really built for them to live in peace, not to live in the, the terrible uh, situations of the world that uh, human beings are going through for human beings to be the best things in the world, as I would say, that human beings are not the thorns in the garden of the world. They are more beautiful than the best flowers you can find in the gardens of the world. But at this time, generally, the situation is, human beings are considered to be the worst thorns, most harmful objects, most harmful beasts in this world. If you look at the world as a jungle, the most harmful animal in the world at this time are human beings. If you look at it as a garden, the most harmful thorns are these human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He sets the rules in Quran al Kareem, He tells us very clearly, approving of an evil, 
is as if you are doing the evil by yourself. I'll give you a simple example of it from a hadith. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if there is a group of people that are backbiting, you sit over there, you don't take part in it, you don't say a single word against no one, because of just sitting in that gathering where there was backbiting, you are getting the same sin as those who are backbiting. Although you did not backbite, you did not do nothing wrong. All you did was, you were sitting quietly in that gathering. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, you get the same type of sin as those who are backbiting. Because the backbiter needs someone to listen to him. If he has no one to listen to him, that will stop him from backbiting. Today, as we heard of everything that was happening in the world, we all sat there quietly. We were watching it every day. We saw what was happening. We sat quietly. So many people died in the world within the last few years. So many people. Not a single tear was seen in our eyes. Rasulullah gives us a beautiful example in a hadith. He says people are just like a group of people that are traveling in a ship. The ship has two floors. The people on the bottom level, on the lower level, that is under the water, they have no access to get any water. So these people at the lower level, they always have to go to the upper level to get some water. Remember the wording's beautiful examples that Rasulullah uses in the hadith. That there are people at the upper level and there are people that are at the bottom level. As we normally use the change the terms and may say high class and low class people. There are some people sitting in the first class and some people are sitting in the second class. Rasulullah tells us, that in the boat and the ship of this world, there are some people that are sitting on the upper level and some people that are sitting in the lower level. So the people that are sitting in the lower level, they could not get any sweet water for themselves. They don't have water. They don't have access to the water. So whenever they need water, they have to go up to the upper level and get some water and then go down. Of course, as they fill their bottles, they fill their buckets, and they go down, they spill a little bit of the water on the upper level. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, the people of the upper level, as they see that there is a little mess over there, look, with these people, they keep on coming. They're supposed to be in the lower level. We don't want to see them on the upper level here. We don't want to see these people up here. And then they come and they do this mess also and we have to clean it. We don't want this to happen anymore. We will do whatever we can to stop it. Okay? So they all agree to a point. They have a meeting. They agree to the point. We will tell the people of the lower level that we don't want you in our level. So they talk to them. We don't want you in our level. They tell them, you know, we have no access to the water. That's the only way we can get it. That's not our problem, that's your problem, you have to deal with it. If you have no water, you can die. Die out of thirst. Let your children die. Let your families die. All of you can die. We don't care. Our concern is, we don't want any mess in our level, and we don't want to see you people coming up here. This is our concern. That our area stays clean, and we don't want to see, want to see none of you people up, up there. So, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, those poor people of the lower, lower level, they had no choice. They couldn't go up anymore. That's it. The doors are closed for them. So the people of the upper level, they started here, they heard some noise. <clears throat> what happened? 
They go down to find that these people are trying to make a hole under the boat to get some water. Now, now the people of the upper level, they have to make a very quick choice. And very important choice for themselves. If they allow these people of the lower level to continue making the hole because we want our area clean. We don't want to see any mess in our area. So, go ahead, you want to make the hole? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said all of them will be drowned. As they will make the hole, is not only the people of the lower level will be drawn, all the people will be drawn. And if they tell them, okay, please stop making that hole. You can come to our level, you can, that's, that's fine. Whatever little mess you make, try to control yourself, but we will clean, don't, don't worry about it. By that, at least they will save their lives. Now, when we were put into the upper level, and really at this time we see ourselves regardless of how much we have or we don't have. It's still in the position that we are sitting at this time. Believe me, we are in the upper level at this time. When we look around us in the world, there are people now that are on the lower level. Take the simple example. Last night. I'm sure most of us had a very good sleep. Whereas over one million people were worried that tomorrow our homes, our city will be flooded. We don't know what was the situation of those people and of those who are not able to leave the town and they know that tomorrow the city will be flooded. Whether it would be or not, regardless. This is what they know and they see that those who could afford to leave, they left. How many of my brothers and sisters, your brothers and sisters and our children as a human being may be sitting there and worried for the whole night. They are crying. They are begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Regardless of their faith, they are begging God. Children may be seeing their parents not able to go to sleep. But as long as we were at our homes, we had a very comfortable bed, nice sleep, and we had a good rest and back to work. As if nothing was going to happen in the world. Did this worry just even <coughs> click into our mind and all of us we say, oh, we watch the news so to know about the world? So we watch that news. What are we going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment after knowing that such a large number of people were so much distressed and troubled and living a terrible life for that night? And we had no worry whatsoever as long as I'm at my home. Did it even click for a minute? How can I arrange for someone to come and just come to my home? I open my doors for a person. Let me try to see if I can contact some people and tell them just come here. Did it even come to our mind? No, we are on the upper level. We don't want any mess in our level. Other people, let them die. If they can't get water, let them die. That's their problem. It's not our problem. Subhanallah. Believe me. It's a situation that now, forget about crying on others. We need to cry on ourselves. The hearts are getting so hard. Human beings are not human beings anymore. No value for human beings anymore. Dying, let them die. Suffering, let them suffer. Homeless, let them be out there. That's not my worry, that's his problem. We, we, we will be questioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about this. Look into the heart. Let's try to scratch our hearts now properly and just clean all of this dirt. This dirt of dunya that is covering the heart so badly that as long as 
my home is safe, my car is safe, my job is safe, and I'm safe, I don't have to worry about no loss in the world. Do we know <coughs> that there is a surah in Quran called Surah Al-Dukhan? I'm sure all of us have read that surah, or at least know the name of the surah, Dukhan. What does Dukhan mean? Smoke. One of the reasons Mufassirin have mentioned for the surah to be called Surah Al-Dukhan and the ayah of Dukhan that is in that surah is, there was a famine in Makkah Mukarramah. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam left Makkah Mukarramah and he did the hijrah, he went to Medina, there was a famine in Makkah Mukarramah. So much, people had nothing to eat in that town anymore. That's it. And they were so hungry now, the people of Makkah generally were, they were so hungry that every person out of hunger was seeing smoke in front of his eyes. As there is smoke, they're dizzy. This was the situation. The leader of the kuffar of that time, Abu Sufyan, radiallahu anhu, who became Muslim later on, at that time, considered to be the worst enemy of Islam, the worst enemy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The person who's setting prizes to kill Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When he saw that situation in Makkah, the only person, the only person he thought of going to for help was Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We need to read our own seerah, seerah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Abu Sufyan, right then, he gets on his camel straight to Medina Munawwara. He talks to his own daughter, Um Habiba. She doesn't want to talk to him about that situation. Abu Bakr is upset. Umar doesn't like him. Now, let's go straight to Prophet ﷺ. And he goes to Rasulullah ﷺ. Who is there? Who is sitting in front of Rasulullah ﷺ? The leader of the kufr. Ya Muhammad, our children are starving to death. Ya yeah, Muhammad, you know the situation of our town at this time. And you are a messenger of Allah. Messengers are mercy for people. Pray to Allah for us. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? What did he say? Here I have a list of conditions that you have to fulfill before I make that dua for you. No. Rahmatul lil alameen sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right away he prays for those people. And then he sends instructions to some sahaba ridwanullah alayhi wa sallam that do whatever you can for them. Abu Sufyan is happy that with this dua and those instructions, that situation will be over now. Now we will get help from all around. Even the point that there are more than this point that we learn of helping, even the leader of the kuffar at that time and those whole, the, the whole kuffar knew that the situation created not by human being, it all, it's all in the control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will make the dua for us, Allah will open the doors. Today a Muslim is not raising his hands to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where everyone else is going to go to, if even me and you will not raise our hands before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm just talking to myself, I think, that how many times do I see my hands are being raised before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making dua for those people, and people all around. But especially I'm talking about, we are on a... Very critical situation where so many people are going through such a difficult time. But I don't know what's the situation of my heart and your heart. We have to really go back. Sit by ourselves now. Let's lock ourselves in a room. We don't have to do this to anyone else. Lock ourselves in a room. And then talk to yourself. 
Do I really believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I really have trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do I have really iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah who says in Quran, after mentioning different nations, Alam tara kayfa fa'ala rabbuka bi'ad. Did you see what Allah did to the people of Ad? And then wa thamud, and then Fir'aun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَأَكْثَرُوا فِيهَا الْفَسَادِ When there was a lot of fasad around them, فَصَبَّ عَلَيْهِمْ رَبُّكَ سَوْطَ عَذَابِ I unlashed my punishment on those people. Adab started opening. Doors of the adab started opening one by one. فَلَوْلَا إِذْ جَاءَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا تَضَرَّعُوا when my punishment, when the doors of my punishment opened, and when they started seeing those signs of the azab, how come they did not repent? Allah is questioning us. How come they did not repent when they saw the doors of the azab are being unlashed over there? But their hearts were too hard, and they thought that it's not their problem, it's someone else's problem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala soften our hearts to understand what is happening to us and to people like us and to have love for human beings, to have concern for human beings, that are for, for our own brothers, for our sisters, for our children, for our elders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to do whatever we can as the people of Allah as human beings and as true believers, as followers of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to do whatever we have to do and to carry the concern for other beings <coughs> like us. And not only that, even for animals, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us the rights of animals too. So we have to really look deep into the heart and see what is the situation of it. Let's do something that will soften our hearts, our hearts. And we can go back. We cry to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah, don't let us be in this situation forever. This, the situation of the heart that is so hard. And God forbid if the adab would come. And if God forbid anything happens, the person leaves with that type of heart, I don't know how we will make it at the end. It's not that easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us and protect us. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله